Good evening all. My name is Dr. Lakshmanarayana, Critical Care Consultant in Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad. I thank ICSM Hyderabad chapter for giving me this opportunity. My topic of discussion is basics of ultrasound. Ultrasound is commonly used in ICU to identify many abnormalities and come to a conclusion in patient care. Ultrasound refers to sound waves with a frequency too high for humans to hear. Ultrasound images, that is sonograms, are made by sending a pulse of ultrasound into tissue using an ultrasound transducer, that is probe. The sound reflex echoes from parts of the tissue. These echoes are recorded and processed and displayed as an image which the operator interprets and comes to a conclusion. This technology was used by Navy to navigate objects in the sea and identify them correctly. The same technology was used in medical science and used as an ultrasonography in patient care. The tip of the probe contains many piezoelectric crystals. These crystals, when activated by an electric current, they emit many sound waves. Some of the sound waves are reflected, some get absorbed, and some get refracted. The sound waves which return to the tip of the probe are processed and ultimately displays as an image on the ultrasound console, which the operator interprets. The working frequency ranges from 1 to 20 megahertz. It is used as a point of care for visualization of many structures on the patient. It has a widespread usage in ICU from head to toe. For example, it can be used as a transcranial Doppler. It is used in airway ultrasound, lung ultrasound, to identify the reasons of hypoxia, etc. Equipment. It contains ultrasound monitor, keys, appropriate probe, and coupling gel. There are many probes used in ultrasonography. Increasing frequency improves resolution at the expense of penetration. Say, for example, this is a curvilinear probe where the frequency ranges from 3.5 to 5 megahertz. Here, the 60 indicates the millimeter of the surface of the tip of the probe. This is a linear probe where the frequency ranges from 5 to 10 megahertz. And this is a phase direct probe with the frequency ranges from 1 to 5 megahertz. This phase direct probe is used to see deeper structures because it has a good penetration with less resolution. Whereas linear probe is useful to view the superficial structures with good resolution. Curvy linear probe is used in PFAST renal ultrasonography to see infravena cava and diagnosing appendicitis, that is in abdominal ultrasonography. Whereas linear probe is used in to see the airway, to measure the optic nausea diameter, for diagnosing DVT and appendicitis. Whereas intracavitary transducer is used to identify peritonsillar abscess and in pelvic ultrasonography. Phased array probe, as we all know that it is commonly used in echocardiography. So curvilinear probe, it can be used as an abdominal ultrasonography in identifying many abnormalities. So in this image, we can see that the area of interest can be clearly seen with curvilinear probe. Phased array probe, is commonly used in echocardiography. In this image, you can see the echocardiography in short axis. This is an image of ocular ultrasonography, which is done by a linear probe. It is used to measure the optic nerve sheet diameter. Now, manipulation of the probe. It is very much important to manipulate the probe in an appropriate way so that area of interest 
of target is clearly seen. It can be remembered as a mnemonic of part P A R T, where P indicates pressure, A indicates alignment, R indicates rotation, and T indicates tilting. The pressure which we apply on the patient with the probe is too much, it causes inconvenience to the patient, and it may falsely show the structures less deeper. If the pressure is too less, then the risk of artifacts is there. Similarly, alignment. Alignment means sliding. We should slide the probe in an appropriate way, forwards or downwards, backwards, so that the area of interest of structure is clearly seen. Similarly, rotation. By rotating the probe to 180 degrees or 90 degrees, we can change the axis from transverse to longitudinal. And tilting. Tilting the probe should be appropriate so that the image can be clearly seen. The indicator of the transducer. It is very much important to direct the indicator of the transducer in an appropriate size. It is commonly directed towards the right side or towards the head. Say, for example, if you are cannulating an internal jugular vein with an ultrasonography, the indicator should be directed towards the head so that we can see the vessels in a proper direction. Image orientation. Image orientation is very much important. In this image, we can see that curvilinear probe is placed in sagittal direction where we can see the inferior vena cava clearly and identify the diameter. The same probe, if you rotate it in transverse direction, the inferior vena cava gets obliterated. Similarly, in transverse view, we have to rotate the probe towards the right or left to see the image of interest clearly. Coronal view. It is nothing but a longitudinal view where we place the probe from the side of the patient. It is commonly used to identify the pleural effusions while we're doing the abdominal and lung ultrasound. Language of ultrasound is very much important. Because few structures appear more brighter, few structures appear more darker, few structures appear less dark. What do you mean by anechoic? Anechoic means devoid of any echoes. That is, the structure of interest appears more darker than the surrounding structures. It is seen when there is a cyst or when there is a blood vessel. Hyperechoic, it means more echogenic than surrounding tissue. It appears more brighter than the surrounding structures. It is seen when there is a calculi or bone. Similarly, hypoechoic, it is less echogenic than surrounding tissue. It appears little more darker than the surrounding structures. This we commonly see when there is a lymph node or a tumor in the patient. So in this image, we can clearly see that the bone appears more brighter, whereas the muscle appears a little darker. Whereas in this image, we can see that vasculature, that is vein and artery, appear more darker than the surrounding structure. That is, they are anechoic. There are different modes in ultrasonography. B mode, that is brightness mode, which is commonly used for many purposes. There is a motion mode, where we use it in lung ultrasound. There is a color Doppler and there is a pulse wave Doppler. Now the common mode that is brightness mode, which we use for many purposes. For example, when we are cannulating an interjugular vein, this mode is commonly used to identify the vein appropriately. M mode, this is used when we are doing lung ultrasound. So the area of interest we have to identify, keep the cursor and press the M mode. And we can see in this image a barcode sign indicating a nematorax. Color Doppler, that is color flow. So it indicates if there is a blue signal, then the blood flow is away from the probe. And if there's a red signal, the blood flow is towards the probe. And whenever we do, this color Doppler, we have to keep the probe either towards the head or toe so that the flow identification is correct. And if they keep, they keep the probe perpendicularly, then we see a mixed signal as it, 
as it is seen in this image. Doppler power flow. It is non-directional and it is used when the flow in the vasculature is very less. Say, for example, in patients of peripheral vascular disease, we need to press a soft key to activate this power flow Doppler. Similarly, there is a pulse wave Doppler. It is used to identify the velocity of the blood in the vasculature. In this image, we can see the arterial waveform where the flow is prominent, that it is more. Whereas in venous waveform, where pulsed wave Doppler is activated, we can see the waveform velocity is not that much prominent, indicating it is a wave. Now depth. Depth, appropriately we have to select so that our area of interest of structure is clearly seen. If it is in the deeper regions, then we need to increase the depth. If the structure is at the superficial level, we need to decrease the depth. So in this image, we can see that first we need to identify the focal zone and appropriately we need to adjust the depth. If the depth is too, too much, then we cannot clearly demarcate the structures as is in this image, we cannot clearly dem demarcate liver, kidney and diaphragm. Similarly, in abdominal ultrasound, the same image, if you are decreasing the depth, the structures become more clear. And in this image, we can further identify the kidney and liver more clearly. Gain. Gain is the strength of the retaining echoes. Appropriate gain adjustment is very much important, which can be adjusted by these knobs, as we can see in this picture. So the gain should be uniform for good identification of the structures. Say, for example, if the gain is not uniform in the upper region, that is in the upper region, the gain is less. So these superficial regions appear more darker when compared to the deeper structures. So this is not correct. Similarly, when the gain in the deeper structures is less, they appear more darker compared to superficial structures. Similarly, obstructing our view. So in conclusion, the gain should be uniform for clear demarcation of the structures. Now, there are many artifacts when we do ultrasonography. So one should be very careful to prevent these artifacts. One is known as eye attenuation artifact. That is when sound encounters a high attenuating tissue, echoes are diminished posteriorly and we see an acoustic shadow behind. For example, when you are doing an abdominal ultrasound and there is a calcula in the gallbladder. So this is the calcula and in the posterior region, it appears more darker because of high attenuation. There is also artifact known as low attenuation. Tuggers when sound wave encounters low attenuating tissue so that echoes are enhanced posteriorly. For example, if you are doing a bladder ultrasonography and there is urine in the bladder and the structures behind the urine appears more brighter. That is because of low attenuation. Similarly, there is known as gas scatter, that is gas artifact. When sound encounters air, much of the signal is scattered so that the posterior structures are not clearly seen. The problem is encountered when we are trying to visualize the iota or when we are doing an echocardiography. Similarly, there is known as a mirror artifact. In mirror artifact, the sound glances of diaphragm the returning to probe with a longer time of flight. The machine misinterprets this as a more liver tissue is further afield. So this is commonly used in oral effusion to identify. When you're doing an abdominal ultrasound with curvilinear probe, we see that this is the liver. And because of mirror artifact, we see that further liver tissue is present behind the diaphragm. Similarly, there is a refraction artifact. This occurs because when sound waves process from one medium to second medium and to third medium, the edge of the artifact appears obliterated so that it appears as a double image. It is commonly encountered when we are visualizing a cyst. 
Similarly, there are other artifacts known as reverberation artifacts. It is commonly uh, seen when you're doing lung ultrasound. It appears as a result of recurrent bright arcs at equidistant intervals from the transitives. So one should be very careful to prevent these artifacts and come to a conclusion when we are doing ultrasound of different regions of the body. So in short, whenever we are seeing any image, first of all, we have to select the appropriate resolution and next appropriate penetration and appropriate generalization. Say for example, if you have selected a curvilinear probe. So when you press the resolution, the frequency ranges appropriately so that our area of interest of image is magnified. So in nutshell, whenever we are doing ultrasonography, few things we have to keep in mind for better visualization of the structures. First of all, we should know our anatomy. That is, which area we are identifying it. Say for example, if I am doing a lung ultrasound, I want to identify pneumothorax at a particular area. So we have to select an appropriate probe and in appropriate place. Similarly, visualize the anatomy in two planes. The commonly used mode is a B mode. And then we need to identify the boundaries, that is the range for the field of vision. Choose the appropriate transducer. If you want to do an echocardiography, choose a phaser probe. If you want to place in center line, use a linear probe. And if you want to do an abdominal ultrasound, select a curvilinear probe. And learn the acoustic windows so that the image becomes more clear. Then we need to maximize the system controls. That is, select the appropriate depth, appropriate gain, and frequency. So when you follow these steps, ultimately we will be able to see the image of interest clearly and we can come to a conclusion. Thank you very much for your patient listening.